That fiend Thompson came to Portland last night, traded drugs on the stage with innocent children, bragged about beating them to death. I don't even vetch, you know. Told the president a filthy gerbil and, and offered no solutions to the that broken and crippled, sad young chaps who uh, brought their families to uh, hear his you know, last uh, pieces of advice before the Armageddon. I ain't Hunter, it's true. But the man is here. I don't know what I could say to, uh, to tell you what you do. The phone, is, the phone has been ringing literally off the hook for five days. And there's so many people disappointed that they're not here tonight. Uh, it's going to be a wonderful evening. He's a great gentleman. Uh, it's funny, his agent paint, has been painting him as this, uh, this horror show, uh, this uh, t t twisted human being. Uh, and it's part of his rap, you know, he gets an extra 500 bucks from me because he says... Hunter Thompson, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. in Seattle. So was I. <laughs> yeah. You must have an earlier train. And you didn't break down in despair and personal uh, grief and uh, maggotry as I did. I had a, uh, a problem with a wino in Seattle. A member of my family. <laughs> hey, can you hear me now? Back in the back? No. no? Well, no. I didn't come here to lecture you people on sound. I am not a sound engineer. I'm good, I'm good at it. I have 80 speakers in my living room, but I don't pretend to be a sound engineer. What was your mother like? What was my mother like? <laughs> you should ask what she is like. She's a wild, heavy, elegant old bitch. Yeah, really a good, uh, a hard rocker. And she's a, like a third generation Kentuckian. Now, I don't know, there are, there are probably such a thing as third generation Oregonians. Right? Lewis and Clark? Yeah? Too much inbreeding. <laughs> inbreeding? <laughs> you people have uh, not done well here, have you? <laughs> no, this is one of my favorite uh, towns. And... So what? All right, well, it's true, goddammit. I, I'm not. I don't get mushy very often, and you will pay for that one, whoever that was. <laughs> I will not get mushy again. You screwed up your face, sir. You're giving me lips. You're making lips at me, I see. I, I can tell by the, the cut of your shirt, sir, that you're probably one of those people. <laughs> Come right in. Come right in. Perhaps you have a paragraph or two. Life. On some days, you just want to beat the living shit out of somebody. And then have the cops get in and clean them up. You little rats. You were lucky to do the fence. <laughs> hey, man, you can't get out of there. So how far does the fence go, you know? Of course we can get out. And I uh, started looking down inside it, and he's uh, all the way down in the lake. <laughs> I thought he was in the swine. It happened to you one of these days. I had the, uh, this one. What is that? We carried this at all times. And we had, I guess they loaded. Well, I guess they loaded up and uh, when the, finally when the police came, I had to go and fire it. You know, like a saddle on the way back. I figured that these little bastards, people screw them in the afternoon of the golf course at night. Lumber thieves, and plywood thieves. You know, one of these things in the stomach turn a person around. What can I do? I was behind the fence. 
No, I understand. I couldn't go. I, uh, I, I, uh, I mentioned all the cab. We've got to, we've got to get seriously busy here. Okay. You've been calling me every conceivable kind of name, you dirty suck. You dirty, stupid bastard. I've had a hold of this. You flaming asshole. Yeah, well... Well, we were, uh, we're an hour away from, uh, perdition here. Well... Not to mention the first edition. I don't, uh... I guess, I guess uh... I'm, we're gonna do it. Well, fuck this. We'll probably do better without, uh... What is this, anyway? Uh, that was just one of my the notes that I just was doing. Anyway. Uh, I, I should get, get to the typewriter. There. There, there it is. Yeah. But it was hoping that uh, Mr. Kent's seeing this cheap fucker, but I tested it when I was getting something. Well, I'm going to have to get out of here. Yeah, that's right. Now, I was never in that business. Never in the business of managing the uh, national economy, and neither was Ronald Reagan. And what the horror of it is that neither was anybody else. Those people from Wall Street don't care about the national economy. They care about, here comes Donald, Don Regan from uh, Merrill Lynch. And he, what do you think he cares about? Uh, the economy in Texas? The price of cotton? No, he cares about what's happening with Merrill Lynch. And he's made uh, chief of staff. He, what he made chief of staff? He and Baker had lunch one day and said, let's trade jobs. Yeah, so, so Jim Baker, who is the smartest uh, politician functioning in Washington, maybe with his half-bastard brother Howard, uh, those, those two are, uh, are the best right now. Baker said, okay, I'll just leave this White House and I'll go to be uh, Secretary of the Treasury and you take over here. So uh, Reagan, who is into a deep drool once again, I feel sorry for the old man. I really have an affection for him. And he shares a, a quality with me, which is a profound intellectual laziness. I suspect with some of you. Yeah, he was a radio sportscaster on the Mississippi River, somewhere out of Illinois. Yeah, Mark, he thought of himself as Mark Twain. But uh, Mark Twain didn't try to be president. And you want to remember that uh, it isn't just an actor's job. You know, actors uh, don't really care about their roles. And they, they're gonna, they can, like Reagan, they can sell light bulbs, they can sell uh, anything, and they can sell uh, Star Wars, apparently. And Ronald Reagan has endorsed the uh, Book of Revelation as a sort of a sketchy guideline for the 80s. <laughs> I don't know. I really feel sorry for the man because he didn't understand what he's, what he's doing. He, they, told, they, they put him up there and they said, uh, handle this, Dutch. And, uh, here, now he's 76 years old. He almost got away with it. All of his life. He was uh, elected governor of California in 1966. And he handled that for two uh, terms. And they called him a genius. Meanwhile, he ran up a triple budget deficits in California and never paid any attention to anything. The first thing he did was strip the insane out of all the uh, uh, mental health facilities. Now we're here. 